That's a perfectly reasonable question. Right, right. I think. Let's try to do You're that. watching Public Affairs. And politics is our game, and we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have as our guest Patrick Brutus. He is running in the second congressional district Democratic primary. We're taping this on January 26th, and really just 30 days from today is the special election, the Democratic primary, to find somebody, to find a Democratic nominee to run in the general election, which is in April, to replace Congressman Jesse Jackson Jr who had to resign for reasons that would take 30 minutes for me to explain, so we're not going to go into that. Mm -hmm. But very seriously, folks, this is a very important race. There are 17 Democratic, there are 17 candidates in the Democratic primary. There are five candidates in the Republican primary. And we're blessed to have Patrick Brutus here this evening. And Patrick, let's just get right to it. What are the three most important issues, as you see it, running in the Democratic primary to get that nomination to run for the second congressional district seat? Number one, Jeff, and thanks for having me on the show, by the way. I appreciate having a chance to come and talk to your listeners and the viewers in the Chicagoland area. But the main three things that we're concerned about in this campaign are, number one, economic growth. Number two, the creation of jobs. And number three, improving the quality of life, because in our education system in Chicago, there's 75% of the children out there who are not reading at grade level. And so we feel this is the three main things that we're concerned about. What are you going to do as a congressman? Can you do anything as a congressman? to promote economic development? So what we're going to do, Jeff, is that the power that the congressman has is not really working at the local level per se. I'm not going to be managing any townships or, or being the mayor. But what we're going to do is utilize our influence, like never before, to work with our local elected officials, work with them in concert to come up with strategic plans that will benefit the area. We've got to create jobs. We've got to utilize existing infrastructure that will benefit the community, benefit those who are hard to employ, underemployed, and unemployed and so therefore we can create industries again. So we'll come back to that but does that cover what you're going to do about the first two topics you mentioned economic development and job growth? Those two are interrelated and they're connected yes. And then we go to education. And then we've got to talk Patrick about our Brutus, kids. what do you do to improve the quality of education in particular for those 75 percent of the kids in fourth grade and I guess it's probably in many other grades right. but we know in fourth grade by testing 75% of the kids in the Chicago public schools are not reading at grade level. And I'll just pretend for a moment I'm a parent, okay? You're talking to two parents of one of those fourth graders, mm -hmm. low-income parents, assume I'm African-American, they could be white, but 85% of the kids in the Chicago public schools are minority. So the majority of the kids in the Chicago public schools are a minority. They are black, they are Hispanic, okay? Assume I'm, I'm African American. My wife and I earn thirty thousand right. dollars. We've got a kid in fourth grade, and I'm concerned because of what you just told me. Black and white, the kids, seventy-five percent, are not going to leave fourth grade reading at grade level. I want to know, Patrick Brutus, what are you going to do differently? Because I hear congressmen say they're going to do wonderful things when they're running. I hear state senators and state reps say they're going to do wonderful things. I hear governors say. But you know what? That needle has not moved at all right. in the last 17 years. There have been many good people there. Paul Vallis is a good person. He gave it a shot. Gary Chico gave it a shot. I'm not running them down. But the truth of the matter, the needle has not moved much at all in the last 17 years. So, Patrick Brutus, you got a heavy burden here. Right. So what we're... we're the, the percentage of children that are not performing in the, in the public school system is unacceptable. That is just a clear... Okay, but what are you going right. to do about it? We know right. it's unacceptable. What are you going to do about it? What we've got to do, though, Jeff, first, before I even lay out a plan, is what we've got to look at it as a community development issue. We've got to look at the conditions in which the infrastructure of the schools are in, the, the neighborhood component of where the children live, and the absence of two-parent households that face our, that, that, our, that our children are facing. We've got to look at it a little bit holistically first because education does not start in the school system. It starts at home. And so we've got to provide some kind of component where the home family structure is supported or it's better improved. That's number one. Number two, we've got to improve our schools. Now, in different parts of the district, 
There are different plans that are ongoing now with you know, school construction, new facilities. We've got to try to make that a universal way to improve our school system so our kids can have a better environment to learn. And then there's also uh, different issues such as charter, voucher, public, parochial, private. There's different school options out there for our kids. To say, people can watch this now on your screen. Take a look at who the, these are some of the candidates, not all. There's 17 candidates, we said, who are running in the Democratic primary. Let me see if I can get that list put back up there again, because I just want people to focus on it. Can mm -hmm. we get that graphic back up? Might be harder than I thought. There we go. And, 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 it's, and uh, it's interesting because must be using an old list because mm -hmm. we have Reverend Pickens on and he was a guest. We have Reverend Williams on and he was a guest. We have the list of five so-called front runners. Let me right. keep that list up there for a second, folks. You're just too, my, my, my crack crew is just too anxious to take things away from me. But even without the list, as I mentioned, we've had Pickens, we've had Williams. They're mm -hmm. two of your opponents. They've been here. Debbie Halverson hasn't been here. Napoleon Harris hasn't been here. These are so-called front runners. Senator Toy Hutchinson hasn't been here. Alderman Beal hasn't been here. I've aggressively sought to have all of those people that I just mentioned mm -hmm. on. Robin Kelly hasn't been here, but folks, you're in for a treat because our guest next week is Robin Kelly, who's committed just last night, told me they would be here. We're happy that she's coming here. And we, we appreciate it, especially because the front runners, sometimes some of the front runners, I said the other four, they want to sit back. They want to go for paid media. They don't want to earn media. They right. want to control everything. Well, we're right? certainly happy to be here, Jeff. And Obviously, that's what we're I'm not say, ducking folks. any questions. We're not ducking any interviews. We know you are a tough interviewer, but we're happy to come here and talk to about the issues to the people. And nobody in this race, Jeff, has talked about education. We focus on other issues. Just wait, let me just say, folks, put up that sure. graphic. Uh, let me get my crew to put up the graphic of Patrick Brutus, because I want to make sure everybody knows who this young man is here. Can we get that graphic up? They'll get it up eventually, and then we'll, we'll notice that for them. Well, in the yeah. absence of time while we're waiting for the yeah. crew to put the graphics up, I'll tell you who I am. I am Patrick Brutus. I'm from University Park originally. I grew up and raised in the South Suburbs. I spent 30 years of my life out there. I've got a 17-year record of performance working at the public sector with the state of Illinois in the Department of Transportation. And for the last six and a half years, I've worked, I currently work with the city of Chicago in the department that manages our land inventory system, where we have programs. You currently work in the city of Chicago. I currently work so for the city of Chicago. So you've got some experience. You know something about how to do economic development from your work in the city of Chicago. I'm the only time. person in this race, Jeff, with this particular background, which we feel at a time like this, in an election right now, with the stakes at hand that we have here today, that this particular experience component level is absolutely value added. The people actually need someone who can actually go to work, first day running, knows the programs, okay. knows how to utilize programs to make people's lives better. We definitely feel that is an advantage for us. So you got seven years of experience with City of Chicago. You've Six got and some, a half. Seven, you got some experience right. with the state of Illinois. You know something about state government? Illinois Department of Transportation, 11 years. Worked okay. in the Department of uh, Department of Transportation, Division of Highways, and Division of Aeronautics. So I spent eight years working on infrastructure projects throughout the Southland. So in virtually every uh, infrastructure project, I-80, between I-80 and 57, I've worked on. Uh, I've also worked for the airport project for three years where I was actually the land acquisition coordinator who started that program and worked on that project for three Where'd years you go to prior school? to coming Where'd you get school. your academic training? So I was very fortunate to uh, graduate from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, uh -huh. but let me also add that I'm a proud, proud alumni of the 201 youth school system, which is the South Suburban School District in Crete, Illinois. Uh, attended Hickory Elementary. How do they do? Creek, How do they do in teaching Money. kids to read at grade level in the fourth grade? Do you know? Uh, I was very fortunate. Our school district at the time. Obviously, that I was you learned quite well. But, but overall, do you know what that statistic is? Is it better than CPS? Is it's, it worse? It's, is uh, it the same? it's it's much more improved than our city school district. Yes. Okay, so they're outperforming the Chicago public schools on that. Uh, typically across the state, suburban districts are performing at a higher level, and that's where we've got to make a difference in education. Somebody might ask you, you've got city experience, you've got state experience, what do you know about Congress? How are you going to get Congress to do anything in particular to help the second congressional district? Well, I think the challenge here is not necessarily if we've had previous experience uh, creating resolutions or signing bills or passing ordinances. The, the challenge here, uh, Jeff, is we actually don't have a track record of electing leaders who actually go and do the work. We've got to have someone passionate well, enough to actually do the work. Well, are saying that Jesse Jackson Jr. didn't do the work? Jesse Jackson, uh, for all the good things that he's done in the years that he's he worked. He's been there 17 years. I think over time, Congressman Jackson uh, a little bit lost his, took his eye off the job, and obviously the end result is what it is. And so now we have a took chance. Took his eye off the job? What does that mean? Well, he came home, had to resign. Well, that's not, not in the best standards. Let's go back before he had to resign. 
he was pushing for a Piatone airport, right? Mm -hmm. For 17 years. Was he doing the right thing? Would you have done that if you had been there for the last 17 years? Technically, the airport never was in the 2nd Congressional District, and so... But he thought, he, looked, thought, he thought that airport would be good for the 2nd Congressional Good for the region. In terms good of for the region jobs, in terms of jobs. But Absolutely. he thought it would be good for the district, didn't he? Was he right or wrong? I think he was right to push an infrastructure project that would create jobs. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to know right now and are our you listeners... Pushing, are you pushing for a third airport still? I am for any project. I am for any project that creates jobs for the people who are needed the most. Does that mean you're for the Piatone Airport? I'm for the airport, but okay. also I want to add, Jeff, that there are three infrastructure projects that I believe are critical to the success and the economic vitality of the Southland. Number one is the Red Line Extension Project from 95th Street to 130, 130th Street. This project would collapse the time frame in which consumers and travelers have to you know, move into the city on a daily basis. The congestion times are very, t are extremely so too help, high. Help industry, uh, help industry, and also would promote. Companies come there if, they, if if employees can move around well, more quickly. What that it would helps do, attract em employers. And what it would if you also like do. employees. Right. We've heard this before. We've heard it from our good friend Pete Jane Greco, who's mm -hmm. a big time Democratic Party strategist. Mm -hmm. If you like employees, you have to like employers. Is that right. true? Aside, slight digression. Yeah, I don't disagree with that notion. Okay. But what it also would do is it would increase economic development opportunities along the line that will be extended from 95th to 130th. That would be tremendous in the communities of Roseland, Riverdale, Dalton, et cetera. These Are those communities all in the second congressional district? Yes. Slight digression. What is the second congressional district? What does it encompass? Give people, so, give our viewers an idea in case they don't know. You might have viewers out there who, we're going to show right. outside of Chicago, we hope to show in a good part of the second Give them a sense of what, what is the second congressional district. It's a good district. question, Jeff. And so for our viewers out there who are paying attention. Because you know this. Right. You've been working. You've been walking, right? We've been out there. The, through We've the whole district. Talking you're everyone. not just a Chicago candidate. You live in Chicago. No. But you're, you're seeking to run, represent that whole district. We are seeking to represent the entire constituency of the second district. So tell us, so, what is that district? Loosely defined, the second district uh, is a triangular shaped district that essentially starts in the south side, south shore area. Using the east border is the state line, so you can take that all the way down to essentially Kankakee. Coming from the west, you loosely come down Stony Island, and then you jog out to I-57, encompassing all the way down to, again, Bradley, Kankakee. So it encompasses parts of Chicago in four or five wards. You have South Cook County, Dalton, Riverdale, Markham, Harvey, along the I-30, uh, Route 30 corridor. Uh, then you also have the far south suburban collar counties, Will and Kankakee, which for the first time in this congressional district will have a say in who represents yeah. them. Is that a Republican area, that Will and Kankakee? Uh, traditionally, you've got a lot more of uh, more, more conservative voters and Republican more voters Republicans. in, in, so in the those district, counties. The district is now a little bit more Republican than it was. We don't know exactly. But yes, yes, but it is more it, it, it so has the general, whoever, Republican voters. Whoever yes. wins that uh, primary, who wins the, who is the Democratic nominee, might have to pay more attention to Republican voters than they did in the past because they could lose. You know, you've got a guy who do you know do you know Lenny who's uh, Lenny McAllister? Yes, I have Lenny, fortune, yes. Mm -hmm. Is he a sharp guy? Very smart. You think he might be a tough candidate? If you were running against him, would you think he would be a formidable candidate? I think he is a very smart individual. I had the chance to meet him one time at another event uh, a couple years ago. I think he's done an excellent job uh, talking about the views so as he like sees them. you'd like to debate him? Uh, I would like to, to talk to the people about the second district and the issues but that we face. But if you won the Democratic nomination and Lenny won the Republican nomination, you think we'd have an interesting race, at least from February 26th through April 9th, it's to be a short race. Yeah. Would it be an interesting race? To, would there be a clash of ideas between you and Lenny? I think, you know, where the people benefit is where we can all come together on issues that we agree upon. Because okay. what we're trying to do is actually That's promote... That's a good point. So let me jump over to education because Lenny, Lenny said he favors school voucher school choice. Mm -hmm. because because he dealt with the same statistic that I asked you to deal with, okay? And I gave him, we narrowed it. We said 25%, 75% of the kids in the Chicago public schools in the fourth grade are not reading at grade level. When you narrow it, and maybe it deserves special focus, mm -hmm. but if you look just at the black kids in the Chicago public schools, and I think they're the majority of the kids, they're a majority of that minority in that, of the minorities in that school, only 80%, that is 80% of the black kids in fourth grade are not reading at grade level. Mm -hmm. So Lenny said to me, he likes school voucher school choice because he says those parents, remember, I was playing the parent. I'm a parent, $30,000 in income. My wife and I, we're concerned. We see only one out of every five kids is going to be reading at grade level. Mm -hmm. We got a kid in the fourth grade 
We said we want a choice. We'd like to take the money, the 15000 That's what we spend now, 15000 per kid per year in Chicago public schools. We say enough. We'd like to go to the private school of our choice. Would you agree with Lenny on that? What I would agree with is this. I think that um, two things. Um, when you look at the demographics of the district, you do, yes, have an overpopulation of African-American students in the CPS school system. Right. And you, you have the issues that our community faces on a daily basis in terms of the community level, our quality of life. But what I want to say is this. Um, I am for an education system that provides a quality education. That's what I'm for. So if that's parent choice, as a parent, I have a child who is a first grader at a public school system, uh, a public school in the city of Chicago. And you know we're fortunate right now that our kid is doing well. He's performing exceedingly, you know, uh, as he should. And the school is a good environment for him. It's a good uh, school. It's a good school. What's it's the name a, of that school? It's, it's a, it's a school on the south side. Is it a public school? It's a public school. Oh, you public don't school. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, we wanna, but it's a public school. Um, you're a parent, and I'm a parent, and our kid is doing well. And, you're, and, so, and so you're happy with that. Public I'm, school. I'm happy, and okay. so every parent wants to have uh, that kind of result, that kind of option, that kind of choice. There aren't parents alive today that would rather have their child in an underperforming school. It just doesn't make okay. sense. And so, so, but if that parent right. is in, an, say they're at CPS, right. and they're concerned, as I said, that's me. Talk to me. Right. I'm, I'm right. pretending. I gave the same question, actually, to Barack Obama about nine years ago. I said, you know, Barack, and he started laughing because he knew we were going to be talking about school right. vouchers. Right. And I said, but I'm serious, Barack. I said, uh, people can go back and look at that nine years ago. And I said right. to now President of the United States, President Barack Obama, I'm, uh, my wife and I are black. I want to be just like these folks here in the Chicago public schools. You got thirty thousand dollars in income. That's not an unrealistic number for people whose kids are in the Chicago public schools. Right. My kids are in failing schools. That is, at, I'm sure at that time, eighty percent of the black kids were not reading at grade level in fourth grade. I, I, what are you going to do for me, Brock? You, are you going to give me choice? Or are you going to allow me to take that fifteen thousand and go to the school of my choice? Well. So that's um, why I asked Barack, and right. we won't go into what he said. Right. That's for another day. What do you say? What do you say, Patrick Brutus? Again, this again is, to me, right. I'm, I'm, looking, this is not Jeff Berkowitz you're talking look, to. Looking, you're talking to a typical right. black couple, thirty thousand income, concerned that their kids are at a school, not a whole part of your district, but a small right. part, where eighty percent of the black kids don't read to, don't learn how to read at grade level. They're concerned. What are you going to do for me? And I'm saying, so I turn to you, right. okay? I am that black couple, and I'm saying I want that 15000 I want out of this failing school. Right. I want to go to the private school of my choice. Would you support it, okay? Because in Washington, D.C., right. actually the Congress controls that, okay? Mm -hmm. And they had a voucher program, and it was cut out. And right. you could have voted if you were there to keep You're it. talking to the D.C. voucher That's right. right. And right. Barack Obama and Arne Duncan worked to cut it out. And I want to know, I want to know, Patrick Brutus, would you stand up to Barack Obama, the president, and say, if it were D.C. and you were there and you were at Congress, you'd say, let that voucher program there, Brock, because I want to give these people choice. Well, what would I, you do that? Would you do that, Patrick? Well, well, what I would do, Jeff, is upon election and uh, having the honor to serve in the 113th Congressional District, uh, the 113th Congress, what I would do is I would work to uh, share with the president no, no, the no, ideas no. I, that I we have. I want an answer. No, uh, no, no Lenny, what? you got to be on this program, and I deserve an answer. Right. And those people in the 2nd right. Congressional District, that's who I'm working for today. They want an answer. I don't want to know what you're going to work for. Well, I, I want a yes or no. Would you give me that choice if I were in Washington, D.C.? Would you give me that choice if I were in Chicago? Will you do something to allow me to leave a failing school? Yes or no? I would do something to allow a child to, or allow a family to take their kid out of school. Okay. That is what I would do. And, and, and that what, means giving me the $15,000 voucher and say go to the school of your choice? I don't think it necessarily only means that, Jeff. I think you can do got, other things, but can, right. I do, can I get that one choice? Uh, I think that should be on the menu. Can I go to a charter school too? I think that should be on the menu. I think that some of the so charter schools. So you're giving us all choices. I think parents want parents. Choice. You're empowering parents. You're differing from Barack Obama and Arne Duncan on that one issue. Well, certainly I don't know where they are today because well, they're not here for us to talk to. Two years ago, but, they so wanted two to cut years this thing ago, out. Two years okay. ago was two years ago, and I think today okay. people look at their situation how okay. they look at it, their situation today, okay. and I think that most parents want. You're a big choice. supporter of charter schools. I'm a supporter of any school that provides a quality education for Did our you kids. Charters, you know there are waiting lists in Chicago, exactly. waiting lists to get minority into parents to get into charters. Absolutely. Would you like to try to build some more of those charters so people on the waiting list who are concerned their kids at a failing school can go out? Would you like to do that? 
So here's what I would like to say. Give me an answer, Patrick. I'm gonna answer, let me answer, let me answer the question, Jeff, because yeah. I think you know, you've asked me and I want to okay. do a good job of providing an answer, not only for you, but okay. for our listeners. Absolutely. And so here's, here, that, that question is multi-layered, right? And so what I'd like to do before we promote charter schools as a choice for kids is work on the formula of giving the public school system schools that are already in existence that are failing another chance before we close them down. So I think the, the conversation another is- Another chance? They've had 17 years of reform? Some of the schools- you want me to wait for another 17 years? You want to experiment? Do you really want to ask me to do that? Because well, Patrick, I, I appreciate there's a lot of people watching this. No, absolutely. What, what uh, they're watching this and they right. want to know, are you saying give them another chance when they've had 17 years of failure? What I'm saying is this. I appreciate the fact that charter schools are operating. I think they should be on the menu for choices for our okay. families. What I also want to say is that before they close the school down and award a charter contract, uh, a network contract to a, another uh, operator to run schools and give them the three and a half or four million dollars it takes to operate that no, school. No, I, I, let me I, finish, Jeff. Just, no, what no, I want to do. Let me just interrupt to say I'm talking about giving parents the power, right, not but, the charter school. That's one option. Right. But in one case, you're not giving it to a company. You're not. You're giving it to the parent. And if the parent spends the money outside, out goes the kid, out goes the cash, and they put it in that private school. But if the parent wants to stay there, they stay right. there. You're empowering black parents. Let me say that one more time. My proposal is to empower specifically black parents because in the Chicago public schools, that's who we're talking about, 85, and Hispanic parents. 85% mm -hmm. of those kids have parents who are brown or black. You're empowering black and brown parents if you do it, and if you don't, you're not. Do you want to empower them? I don't think the, I don't think the conversation should be framed in absolutes, but I don't think that those things shouldn't be on the menu. I believe okay. that we should okay. have choices. I think voucher programs is something that we yeah. are worthy consideration. I do want to also give failing schools a chance to re-succeed. How much more time? How much I more think a one, one, year? a one year is, is good enough for one me. One year, and then the one track year, record, if they don't improve in one year, they've had their chance, right? They've got to have a limit. All right. We've got to have a ceiling. Right. That's, because, that's different than 17 years. Because past performance is indicative of future performance okay. in a lot of situations, and we've got to look at that a little bit more carefully. Guns, people, that's on their mind because of Connecticut, because mm -hmm. these 28 people, including 20, I think, first and second grade yeah. kids, maybe just first grade kids, right. no other way to put it, they were just Tragic. riddled with bullets, Tragic. not just shot once, okay? And the answer from the Obama administration is we need more gun control, we need to ban high volume clips, ban assault weapons, and I remind you, and our viewers out there, and the people in the second congressional district, I remind you that in this case, in Connecticut, the mother had the guns, and mm -hmm. they were legal. And you know what? If you ban manufacture in the future, those guns are going to be out there, and she could probably find somebody to sell them to her. The kid who did the shooting, her kid, right. okay, he stole them from the mother, and right. then he shot his mother. He killed right. her, okay? Right. I don't see that the proposal that people are talking about really affects that situation. And you're talking about the ban on the assault weapons. Yeah, yes. because the, she... You're banning new manufacturer, new mm -hmm. sales, okay? Those things are out there, and because there's going to be an underground market, they're probably going to get them, okay? Right. I'm not saying you necessarily shouldn't ban them. I'm not even taking a position. I just point out to people that it's probably going to be ineffective in stopping that situation. Right. Same with the high-volume clips and all that. There are high-volume clips. Look, David Gregory and Meet the Press violated the law by holding up the high-volume clips on Meet the Press. Not supposed to have them in D.C. Mr. Gregory didn't have any trouble putting his hands on them, okay? You see the point, folks? You can ban the manufacture and possession and sale to people who are going to do lawful things with this. The guy who's going to do something illegal, you're just getting, it's like McCarthy, our chief of police here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. He runs around talking about how many guns have been turned in. Right. Well, Police Chief McCarthy, I mean, I just ask you. You think the bad guys are turning in the guns? I'd ask you, Patrick. Right. Do you think the bad guys are no. turning in their guns? No, I don't so think So what the it... hell is he saying? <laughs> You're taking it away from good guys, from people who are not going to do anything unlawful. Or who no longer, no longer have use for their firearms or weapons, right? What the hell are right. you doing? Would you go and spend some time? Why don't you go out to Inglewood, okay? There's, here's something for you to do, Mr. McCarthy. All right, come on public affairs and explain how much time you've been in Inglewood. Explain how much time you've sat in the west side of Chicago, in the south side of Chicago. I know you like to go out with the cops, okay? Just tell me. Tell me you've looked there. Tell me you've seen the bad guys with guns. And tell me you think what you're doing is stopping them from having guns so they can shoot good people.
Am I making myself clear? I think I understand your point. Okay, so um, we only got a few minutes left. So you tell me what you're going to do in Connecticut or that type of situation. Do you have to do something about the crazies? This kid was right, nutty, okay? Right. He well, was nutty, and there's, we don't have a law that says the parent has a real incentive. That is, the parent has an obligation. Right. He's, a, he's an adult, maybe living with his mom. We need to change our laws so that the people who know the nutties, right. crazies, I'm right. sorry, you gotta use that word, will do something to get them off the streets, get them help, that might have, and the last thing, and then you can talk, and then you can talk, because this is about you. <laughs> right, but right. Set this up. When you know, maybe, maybe a teacher, maybe a principal, maybe an administrator who's trained in the use of guns should have access to a gun so, and have a good communication system so when the teacher says, all alert, there's a guy who, right. who sneaked into the school, he's got a gun, he's, kill, he's gonna kill right. us. Right. The teachers had to, it was a gun-free zone, folks. Right. The teachers had to try to stop bullets with their hands. You wanna right. do that? Put up your hands. You can't stop bullets. No. But if, if there were a guy in the school, a good right. guy with a gun, right. he might have minimized the harm. Would you like to do that? Would you like to somehow arm the good guys? Well, um, you got three minutes and then we're almost done. There's so. a lot of stuff you just said there, Jeff, and yeah. I, I, you know, I appreciate the question. The issue is certainly one uh, that is starting to resonate with a lot of Americans. And I think we tried that in Chicago with uh, armed pro police uh, in the schools. And I don't know if that promotes a healthy safety environment we for don't our have students. A, we don't have a lot of people being killed in the Chicago public schools when we have armed police. I don't think we do. Right. We have people being killed all around the schools, I understand. Right. But, here's but not the, in the Chicago right. public schools, I don't think. And here's what I want to say about this. I think the, uh, the national topic right now, the conversation about banning assault weapons is... Uh, it, I think it's an interesting conversation. I, I look at our second district. What is your position? And I look at what I, I'm for sensible and responsible gun Does control policy. Does that mean you do you favor what Obama's proposing? Ban on the manufacture and sale of high volume clips, ban on what he calls assault weapons, uh, broadening the definition so there are fewer exceptions as to what assault weapons. You sign on to all that? I think the conversation probably should, should pivot off that point and more onto a um, licensing, you know, the pre-qualifications, because guns don't kill people who use no, guns No, but what about kill. getting at and the so, crazy people? Because that's what's happened. Right. At least in Connecticut, that kid was bonkers. Right, so but, uh, what I would want to say- That guy in Colorado who right. killed those people, bonkers. you know, walk, bonkers, right. right. There's Issues. no way, how, what do you, is there, should, should there be some, and people are talking about it, maybe it's part of the Obama package. You need something to incentivize well, the people who know these people right. to go and seek help for them. But right. So let me let me just frame it this way, Jeff. And if you allow me a couple okay. of minutes, just quickly. We right? only got. I'm sorry. Right. You only I know. Got like I, two but, minutes, but right? let me get my point across okay. real quick. Um, let's look at it in terms of the folks in our district and the gun issues and gun control and gun incidents that we have in this Chicagoland area and south suburban area. We're talking about, you know, primarily the gang bangers and people who right. are okay. doing robbery and crime every day, rob, kill, steal. Right. Okay. And so these incidences are, are mainly perpetrated by people with handguns, not assault weapons, okay. not high clip right. magazines. So, okay. so, and so we're talking about um, how we look at the issue. So I think if people on a daily basis can, um, survive and live by robbing and killing people. I think with guns, these people have some sort of mental health issue that requires counseling. So I'd like to look at it in the sense of how can we promote mental health counseling, mental health education for folks who are, you know, uh, assailants and, and uh, perpetrators should, of violence. But for that guy who creeps arms. into the school and gets right. in there, comes in the back, should we have some mechanism for some of the good guys to have access to a gun so they can maybe defend against the bad guys? I, because they can't stop them with their hands. Right. No, I think that there Patrick, needs to be something in place. they can't stop with their hands. I think there needs they to be, need to be They need to have a gun occasionally, right? I think we need to have some, some measures to prevent and those kinds of people in your um, district, incidents. when they're in an unsafe area, they should have a right to have a gun to, the, to defend themselves, right? Well, I'm certainly... Do you believe in that? That's I what I the certainly Supreme Court said that. I certainly believe in the 25 amendment, the, 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 the Second Constitution, amendment. the Second Amendment, no, the Second Amendment, all the amendments, but I certainly believe in the Second Amendment as well. Um, right to self-defense. Right to bear arms. Right uh, to bear arms. I am in you favor of that. all the okay. Constitution has to offer. However, I do think that in the times that we live in now, we do need sensible gun control, responsible gun owners, because guns don't kill. It's the people who use guns that are doing the killing. And the Seventh Circuit has said concealed carry. LMI has to have a concealed carry law. Do you agree with that policy? I'm still evaluating that position because what I don't want to see is that we have a return to the Wild West days where... What about that person who's...